just have some really random tips and tricks today, kind of in the spirit of you learn something new in NetSuite every day. Um, and so sometimes you run into something and think, everyone knew, knows this but me. I didn't know this. And so some of these are along those lines. Um, and we won't go in, into a lot of detail. I'm just going to brush over them and, and uh, so that you've, and you'll have this slide um, later in the posting so that you can look back at it. But one of them I was talking with a client this week and we were talking about how you wanted a KPI, a key performance, you know, a metric that you could follow, that you could see how it goes up and down over time. And uh, there's not a lot of things in that, that suite that allow you to do as a reporting. You can do AR, AP, and inventory that way, but, um, but it, it's not as easy to get a KPI when you're looking backwards. And so we, we talked about putting it into a statistical account, the answer, whatever that number was that we were tracking. So like book backlog or headcount, or you could pick any number in the system. You could do a safe search on that create a schedule to put that number into a statistical account. And then that you could create a custom KPI to track that value over time so that you could see that graph on your KPI dashboard and it would show you um, how you've done over time. And then you would also have just historically, you could do comparisons against how are we doing. So um, that was in, that was kind of a, a light bulb moment of, oh, we could just put this somewhere, put this number somewhere so we can get back to it. And then um, kind of related to that is to name the search that you're using for that uh, schedule that you run to, to post it to the statistical account in such a way that you know not to change it because then it would mess up your KPI. Um, and this actually applies to all uh, saved searches. If it's used in a workflow, for example, to put a code of WF in front of it, or you know, you can you can um, you can make your searches uh, if it's used in a script to say that in the name so that you don't change it or don't delete it. Um, another one that was a random one I came across this uh, last month was to always check this box. There's an accounting preference um, on, for your general ledger to show all transaction types in your bank rec. Um, so someone was doing a bank rec and they couldn't see a transaction. And it, I believe, I'm trying to remember, it was, a, it was kind of a weird transaction, like an RMA or something. I, I don't even remember, but it wasn't showing. And so we found it in their general preferences that this box wasn't checked. So um, that was kind of a stumper. Um, so always check that box. And there's one right below it that says to expand your accounting lists. And I always like to check that one so that if I'm, let's say I'm doing a vendor bill and I'm going down to pick my account that I want to apply it to. If you don't expand it, it might limit your search to just expense accounts, but you may want to book that to a liability. You may want to put it in a really weird place. Um, and so what it does is it lets you determine where you want to book. There's still a few limitations, like on a deposit, you can't pick another bank account or something like that. But for the most part, it opens up your account lists when you're on transactions. And so I always like that one. Another one, um, you know how you're running safe searches and you want to verify them against your income statement, for example. And then you find, oh, I picked up a memorized transaction and, and in my safe search when I was getting my totals. Um, and so um, if you put posting yes in the filter, that'll remove all of those orders that uh, Corey talked about at the beginning today, sales orders, purchase orders, uh, work orders, transfer orders. It'll also take out your um, memorized transactions so that then you know you're only picking up posting transactions so that everything should tie out to your general ledger. Um, in the past, I was, I was selecting the uh, memorized no, and I was going through this, and then I realized all I have to do is say posting if it's a posting. So I thought that would be easier. Um, finally, we have uh, field level security that comes up sometimes when we're um, implementing NetSuite and looking for ways to, um, to lock some things down. 
And field level security is available if it's a custom field because you can use the access sub tab and you can say this custom field is only available to these roles and then you can say you know what level it's available to and I'll go ahead and pull that up in a second here. But um, for the standard NetSuite fields, you would need to use forms to create field level security. So if you don't want someone to have access to a form or let's say you, I'm sorry, a field, let's say you only wanted them to have it in view only mode so that they could see the, the value in that field but not change it and it's a standard NetSuite field, you would have to create a different preferred form uh, for that transaction or that entity and then you would change the view of that field to an inline only for that form. Now remember you'd want to also take the form selection off the form so that they can't um, change the form to get to that field. So let me move this over and um, I just wanted to show you just briefly that one that I talked about. If you're doing a, a new custom form and let's say it's, I'm just going to do a checkbox on this one. Um, if I come down here to my access tab, this is where you define it. And you can say um, up here is the default access level for everybody. So what you can do is just say, we don't have a default um, uh, access level. And then you can say the only role that can fix this is the project manager and that they can edit it and have full um, uh, for search and reporting. They can do the inline editing. Here you might say that they could do a run and see it, right? That they don't have uh, access to change it. Maybe it's just view for everybody else, but the project manager can change it. And then I've just gotten in the habit of making the admin role full and full as well, so that if, if I'm looking at things, I can always get to them. But that was just a quick uh, tip and trick. So hopefully that helps you out and you can read more in the you know, sweet answers about it as well. Awesome, thank you so much, Dana. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording at this point.